why does this happen? So he's gonna be singing, all right. <laughs> <laughs> yep, well, I'm like, this shit, why is it happening? I, I had yeah. to hear you <laughs> <laughs> But, all right, Chica, count me the down. Three, two, one. Uh, I love that. Um, welcome to the Emotions and Shh Podcast. That's our name now. If you don't like it, don't care. Tough cookies. Um <laughs> And today, what are we talking about? My lovely co-host, who I forgot to say, introduce yourself. Go ahead, introduce yourself, my lovely. Uh, I'm Haven, guys. What's up? And today, we're talking about being unavailable mentally in a relationship. Like, you're lacking intimacy mentally. Yes. Because that's a big thing. A lot of people look at just the physical stuff, and we're going to do physical later, but mental is a big part of it. It is. It really, honestly, is. And uh, I, I can't speak for my lovely, lovely co-host. I don't know why I can't pick another adjective besides lovely. But uh, <laughs> but I can, at some times, have been an emotional cripple. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really interesting way to put that. Oh, that was the insult I was, that was throwing at me. <laughs> so, <laughs> because <laughs> I know with me, I'm not afraid of relationships. I know we talked about this before, but I'm not a, afraid of relationships. It just sometimes I am not comfortable in relationships because I'm so used to being by myself, being myself, that if I let somebody in, it requires a lot of work, if that makes sense. It makes a lot of sense because I can I can definitely relate to that. Um, yeah, you spend so much time out of a relationship, you're just definitely okay with being by yourself. So when you do meet someone, opening up is like, hmm. Do I need to? You know, because like I, I've been handling everything on my own before I met this person, so it's definitely something to think about. It really would be because it, it's with me, as you as you know, I uh, accidentally landed a date. I guess accidentally. I, it was an accident, <laughs> and um, I mean, it's gonna be. It's not really a date. It's a get together. It's gonna be interesting, but it made me start thinking about. You know, putting together a relationship and whatnot. And I'm like, am I ready for this? I don't know. Hmm, I don't know. <laughs> because I know about with me, I overreact sometimes. I'm like, okay, if I date them, what about free time? What about this? What about that? I like my time myself. I like my schedule, my routine. Will I have enough time for them? Will I want to give enough time? I don't want to change up my dynamic for somebody else, which you shouldn't have to change your dynamic, but uh, most times you will have to change up a little bit. I guess I'm more Ooh. set. Yeah, I'm setting my ways what I want to do, and that's not good. And it sucks. I've definitely been there. It's like, I just don't want to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes, you know, I guess it's being vulnerable as well. Once you let someone in on what's going on with you, now they, they have another part of you, you know, like they're that much closer to you. And being vulnerable has definitely always been difficult for me, personally. Like, even when I was in a relationship for five years, you know what I'm saying? It was like, hmm, I'm keeping this to myself. <laughs> like, you know, I think one boyfriend, only one ever seen me cry. Like, that's a big no-no for me. Oh, man. That, that is heavy. I think mine might be the same. Just one. And, like, the relationship itself didn't go the way I wanted to. But I don't regret it. But at the same time, I don't want to whether it's right or wrong, I don't want to give up that much of myself to anybody anytime soon. Oh, I agree. Like, not, I won't say ever, just not anytime soon. <laughs> it's just, it's something you got to work on. Because it's, because it's, okay, I'm a people watcher. <laughs> I like to watch people. And one of my good friends, him and his girlfriend are dysfunctional. And he's given up a lot for her. And she not she hasn't really given up much for him. And I'm not saying you, it needs to be an even split kind of thing, but like he has changed essentially who he is for her. Like he's a vegetarian now. I mean, which is good. Um, he is what I like to call an ultra feminist now. Mm -hmm. Which I, feminism is not a problem at all. But like when you won't watch a movie because 
you think the woman is wearing scantily clad clothing is a little bit much for me. Seriously? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's extra. We had to convince her to go see Wonder Woman. Because uh what? Because the traditional Wonder Woman clothing was a little bit too revealing for her. <laughs> Um, I'm not even gonna bash nobody. Whatever your preference is, do you boo boo? But I think that's a bit extreme, you know. But hey, and that's the thing, dude. It's and that's that's the part that worries me because I know me when I'm around friends or significant others, I w- I naturally take a piece of them. That's why I'm very selective with people I hang out with, talk to, whatnot, because I take a piece of them and it becomes me. And I'm and when I'm with somebody, I take a lot from them, and I don't. When I'm with with somebody, like on a level where I, you know, mentally, emotionally, and you know, physically, of course, I I don't have a choice of what I take from them, and that's a little scary. <laughs> no, it definitely is, honestly. Like, I'll ask you a question then. Um, have you been with somebody? And I mean, we we discussed this a little bit in the free show. There, have you been with somebody and you just didn't want to connect with them, like? You wanted to be with them, but you didn't trust them. Be with them in what way? Hmm. Relationship or physically? Relationship. Relationship. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Have I ever wanted to be with somebody that I didn't trust? Them? Um. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, and um, it's a weird middle ground you play because you like them, you like spending time with them, you like their company, but at the same time, you don't get too close with affection because, you know, the more you give affection to somebody, the closer it brings you, you know, and then they start seeping into your mind, emotions and all of that, and so um, it was really weird because I was trying to spend time with them, but at the same time, I wasn't really too affectionate, so I guess it left them confused. Even though they knew what the deal was, nah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, I, I'm with you 100 percent because that was me too. I was with somebody, and I, I'm the type I notice everything, so I noticed my personality changing with them. But I was like, do I really want to be with them? And I was like, not really. But <laughs> I was, I was thinking about not being with them while I was making plans and being excited about being with them. Wowie! It, it was a confusing time. Like, though this show is about emotions. I can honestly say I've learned more talking about lotions doing the show than ever before because uh, I, I don't like showing my emotions at all. We're here with it because I, I definitely feel you 100%. Like, I, I can't stand when people throw around. Another thing that, fra- that makes me afraid is, like, I, ha- I put a lot of value into words. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people throw around that L word a lot. And I'm like, I don't know about that. <laughs> because... Yeah. You what? People do say that so freely. I said I've noticed people say that so freely, and I'd be looking like, mm. oh, like with friends, cool, because you can love your friends pretty fast. That's cool. Uh, significant others, nah. <laughs> Once you be, if by some miracle you're my friend and you become my significant other, I stop saying I love you altogether. That's dead, <laughs> because now you're starting at zero. <laughs> Because right, you gotta go back. <laughs> right, send your ass, send your ass back down. Go into developmental. I'm sorry, but you know, need to work on your craft. That's so funny. Because you require but, you, know, you. I've never had a friend, and we became more. So, can you know that it has, it has to happen in a really small window, but then maybe two month window. You know what I'm saying, like. Mm. If it go any further than that, I think we're just friends for life, you know? That's fair. That's fair. See, with me, it's always been one of those cases where it's like, when I meet you, a lot of, I mean, we talked about this, um, physical attraction, attraction. I'm physically attracted to a bunch of weird stuff. Like, I just am. <laughs> you got nice little cute ears, or you got curly hair. I'm, I'm attracted to you immediately. That's just what it is. <laughs> Oh my god. Ears though? Look, it's it's not a sexual thing though. It's not. <laughs> like I don't want to touch your ears while touching myself. None of that weird shit. Um it's I just they add to your cuteness, I should say. That's what it is. They add to your adorableness, if that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, they're not it's not at all sexual. It's not like, oh man, them ears, let me go ahead and slide up in that. No, no, that's gross. 
<laughs> that curly hair, though, I can touch curly hair all day long. But yeah, curly hair, you at least an eight now, like, period. Wow. <laughs> you at least an eight. <laughs> um, yeah. Dude, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You could throw curl hair on a, on anything, <laughs> and we could. Uh, even ugly ass dogs. If you throw some curly hair on them, they're they're adorable little dogs now. Wow. So if you put curly hair on a big show, dude, that man, you eight now. <laughs> the flawless show. That's what we're gonna be have to call them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, why is that so funny? But uh, but no, no, but. Yeah, it for me it's a it's kind of similar where it's a small window. I've only had one friend, and I won't even say, oops, <laughs> I won't even say that um, she escaped the friend zone because she started as a significant other. Like I talk about it all the time, but she started as a significant other and then transitioned to friend. So she's always that weird thing, if that makes sense. I mean, that, that's easier. I had that before, you know. Yeah, but um. I think one if there's literally no feelings there anymore, that can be the best because that friendship will be super duper strong. But a lot of the time, somebody still has feelings, so it would be super weird. So true. And my emotions are weird. Where they're, <laughs> where yes, I may think sexual thoughts about somebody, but if presented with the actual like, let's have sex, I always go. I always say, no, nah, no, nah, I'm good. I'm, I'm fine. <laughs> Because one time I actually went to my, my best and I was like, you know what? Let's do this. Let's, you know, bump ugly. Let's grind on each other. Let's do this. I was being, I was kidding. And uh, she sat on my lap and she was trying to punk me. She sat on my lap like, let's go. I was like, oh no, get off of me. And I pushed her off. <laughs> oh my goodness. Because I don't, I joke, but only like three people on earth actually know who I would actually sleep with. It's you, her, and like one other person would know who I'd actually sleep with. <laughs> Yeah, we in the know. <laughs> right. Uh, by the way, that girl that I saw earlier this week, if her personality matches up right, go ahead and toss her on the list because that personality is popping. I totally, I like her for you, like, for sure. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that. Co-host endorsement. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> because, dude, she's gorgeous. Like, I don't even comment on that, but she like, gorgeous. Like, cute. like my top three ain't changing. Like she cute, but she ain't top three cute. Like that ain't changing. Uh, you know the top three, that ain't changing. But she, she, top top six. She might be number six. You know. She definitely cute though. She definitely cute. That smile though. But anyway, um, <laughs> but uh, no. But what I was saying was, yeah, with me, I have to get to know you. If I always do something awkward to you to make you act awkward either giggle weird or something to get a good feel of not only who you are as a person if i want to be with you because i remember when i started talking to you i said goofy shit to see your awkward laugh which is the most adorable thing on earth um, your awkward laughs are the worst though but see the thing is if you're if you're open enough to do an awkward laugh around somebody that means that i'm shaking off that facade you know that that uh that day i call it um what's the word i call it day two because day one is, you know, day one is being real. Day two is like, okay, let me put on my facade. Wow. Uh, I want to I wanna shake that off. If, you, if you're if comfortable enough to give me that awkward laugh, you might be somebody who has some potential. That's how it works? Yeah, that's how it works. Because I'm, I'm me on day one. So <laughs> day one, two, three, four, five hundred and sixty-five. Um, <laughs> yeah. Because it's just too much. It's too much. Now, nowadays, people try to put their best foot forward. It's just like, no, put your real foot forward. It's just too much work. Yeah. Like, just let's let them know who you are from the jump. Right. Be honest. If you like, like, like for stance, you know, having someone come to you and be like, hey, girl, what do toes do? Like, wow. <laughs> what you going to say? You going to say either no thank you or show them toes off, you know? You'd rather have it on day one than day 400, right? True, true. I don't want to be invested in it. I'm like, oh, you're a, you're a weird foot guy. Okay. <laughs> speaking of which, well, when, speaking of which, I'm going to talk about something after this, but, you know. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm kidding. I'm joking. Oh, I'm not joking, but I'm joking. Um, <laughs> But, no, why do you think we – what's the word? Why do you think that we as people, or us specifically – why do you think that we sometimes 
don't like opening up to people? Well, um, I don't want to call it a fear, but I want to say maybe it's just a comfortability with being, um, I guess just handling stuff on your own. That's how it is for me. I mean, it's a little bit of both, but I'm just used to handling things on my own. So I'm like, why do I have to speak about something with another person when I've been perfectly fine? You know, unless, of course, you know, I could come to you. I'll go to my best friend for like a little bit of advice, but I don't know. And then another thing is, like I said, you open it up, you letting someone all the way in. And I mean, you know, a lot of people ain't shit. So it's like, I don't want to let someone get to know me on such a deep level and then they're going next month, you know? You know, you're right. Because uh, my last actual significant relationship would not. My biggest fear when things were going rocky wasn't, it wasn't necessarily that she would leave. It was that I was dreading that breakup conversation because she was going to actually say things that I've opened up to her about. Mm. Because I don't care what anybody says. When you break up with someone, they yell at you. They don't make up things. They say real things. It may have a twist to them. It may have like a different variation to it, but it's based on some real shit. Mm-hmm. And that I'm the most worried about because I remember when she did tell me something, I, I wasn't mad. I wasn't sad. I was just like, well, that, it's true. <laughs> oh my goodness. She was right. I couldn't, I just sat there and I said, oh, um, okay. <laughs> That's all I could do. Well, what's that, right? Well, so it makes you not want to open up to people because I know, um, uh, with the, the little lady that I'm supposed to go out to this thing with, uh, <laughs> um, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do what I always do on dates. I do superficial stuff. Like I'll be honest. I tell you stuff that will make you laugh, but it's nothing really significant. Like I don't tell you nothing significant. Mm-hmm. I may sprinkle in here and there to make you comfortable, or I may tell you a funny story. But it's honestly not until about the fourth date that I actually tell you anything that's of any value. Other than my favorite color is this. Oh my gosh. I'm just saying. Periwinkle for life. Sorry. Is that really your favorite color? It's not though. <laughs> it's not. Oh, I think it is. It's not though. You know my favorite color. <laughs> I think it's periwinkle now. I think you fooled me the first time. I <laughs> that's not true. It's definitely not purple wink. Periwinkle. <laughs> I mean, if it's if it's that, then your one of your favorite colors is not pink. <laughs> mm-hmm. What kind of girl do you think I am? <laughs> the kind that likes controversy. I sure do. Mm-hmm. I sure. You don't like drama because drama involves you. You like controversy. It's different. It is different. It definitely is different. It is controversy. Is <laughs> yeah. But I got one question for you, then, little lady, because apparently I like calling you little lady, little ma'am. I'm big. And you got a big heart. <laughs> <laughs> like said, that's all I can give you because you ain't big at all. <laughs> you, you ain't. <laughs> that is mad funny. You got a big mouth and you got a big heart. Listen, I'm just saying. You talk, all I'm saying is you talk shit. You good talk shit talk. I never talk shit. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Whoa. Okay. You know, I just finished watching uh, American Horror Story Roanoke. Keeping them lies going on. That was a good season. It was. Weird. It was. They're about to snatch your ass up. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, uh, in, I want to ask you this final question. You can ask me a final question since I've been asking some of them. A little late. Okay. If... You had the, oh, <laughs> so when I came to this topic, I was discussing with my friend and I said, what would be the ideal date for you then? Since you don't like open up emotionally and whatnot. Mm. And he said, someone who's mute. I was like, really? Wow, that's extreme. <laughs> and he was like, all right, how about somebody in a coma then? I was like, really? <laughs> he was extreme and then he went dark. He he born a lot. Yep. Uh, yep. Because I was speaking of dark, <laughs> I was on a podcast last night, right? I'm going off subject, but we were talking about the super sexy Jason Momoa, right? Mm, that man is beautiful. 
Oh. We started the weird little hashtag. Don't uh, don't touch my Momoa. <laughs> right. Because he said I would be his girlfriend to death if she tried to touch him. I was like, whoa. <laughs> what? And I was like, are you oh. serious? Are you serious? He's like, no. I'll, okay, that may have come off a little darker than I wanted it to, but <laughs> don't touch my Momoa. He's a sexy man. That's a handsome man. Really freaking sexy, like, mm-mm-mm. like, mm-mm-mm. like. So, and also, Haven. Uh, next time you have sex, with somebody, you know, what? never mind, never mind, never mind, never mind. What kind of small shit are you gonna say? I was gonna say, I just want to hold your hand. That's all that I want. Is that so much? Bye, bye. You have a weird thing. First of all, who has sex in a room with other people? Number one. Apparently so, wrestlers. Apparently wrestlers. <laughs> well, I am not a wrestler, so no thank you. There will be no hint from me. Seamus apparently watched Daniel Bryan and Brie Bella have sex. Apparently that happened. And she and like one of them held his hand. I think it was Daniel. That's a really weird thing. I just want to hold your hand. I'm not trying to creep on you. I ain't trying to watch. I just want to hold your hand for moral support. No, sir. You better go find Seamus because he's down for it, apparently. Man, look, I ain't trying to be like Xavier. I'm trying to be like the cameraman. That's all. Listen, what I'm saying is just go find the wrestlers, get into their circle if that's what they into, you know. <laughs> okay, that's fair. Great. Fair, fair, right. fair. But no, um, my thing with the, uh, my actual question, because I had to go on a tangent there. <laughs> my, <laughs> my actual question, my dear. Um, I know. What if you do meet that that special somebody that you are so madly in love with? You want to open up with them completely. Do you have complications open up with them still? Um, I think it would still be a process. Mm-hmm. I don't think it would happen overnight. Okay. But um, if they're the right person, and I, I think they will make everything a bit easier. And um. If I wasn't ready, I feel like they would be understanding and just let me break at my own pace, you know, not trying to like force me to open up and talk about this, that, a third, or not trying to force me to be super affectionate when that's not what I'm used to. You know, I think they would let me get there on my own. Hmm. Okay. No, that's fair. I, I want to co-sign with that and add on the fact that for me, I actually really, really, really want to open up to somebody like that. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I'm afraid of doing it. Is that, yeah. Like, I would be, if I found somebody that I trusted that much that I could just open up to them to that level, like, oh, dude, that would be the best thing ever. Like, oh, dude, right. that'd, be, that'd be, I'd be excited. I'd be so into it. I would want to tell them everything, you know, hear everything, just open up completely. I want that. But, I know better than to do that of somebody off the rip. So, mm-hmm. so I'm very selective. And my selectiveness can sometimes come off as, what's the word? Standoff, stuck up. <laughs> Damn. Oh, yes. That's, that's the worst insult. And one of them was afraid of intimacy. And I was like, you're damn right I am. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me something I don't know. Bitch. I'm sorry. <laughs> wow, you have to add the bitch. What? And just for the record, y'all, it was a dude who said this, not a girl. <laughs> okay. I'll call a dude out his name all day. Um, <laughs> bitch <laughs> ass. Um, <laughs> but no, it, it really does make you afraid. I remember one of our mutual friends, he talks about it all the time. Banga, banga. I love saying that. It's so much fun to say. Um, <laughs> he does talk about it. It's hard to trust people. Sometimes you give them the world. You put them on a pedestal. I used to say the phrase for like my ex, I would say, Sometimes I feel like I'm moving to heaven and earth and you're not even walking down the street. Mm. And it's true. I would do the most for her. And when she did something for me that was like minuscule, I still appreciated it. But if I didn't do the world for her, she was like, you don't do anything for me. And that hurt because I was like, what? 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 I like, I got real mad. Like nowadays it's like, Sometimes I feel as though I don't want to do half as much as I did for her because I feel like if you do everything for somebody, they will expect that. And when they expect that, if you don't do it, they get mad. Like, you're, what's wrong with you now? You see, I have a, not a theory, but I definitely understand what you're saying. 
I think you have to work your way up to those things. Like you can't give somebody the stars, sun, and the moon in the first month of your relationship. You know what I'm saying? Like build it up gradually. You know, you do nice things here and there, but don't break out your your best stuff in the beginning because that's what you have to look forward to. You know, you have, all your surprises have been used up. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. You are absolutely right. Like. I couldn't agree with you more. Also, I had to say for record for all the fans and listeners listening and all that good stuff. We are the best at on the fly conversations. And <laughs> just for some behind the scenes knowledge, I already know that you and I text and message and all this stuff during episodes. <laughs> because don't mess with my Momoa. <laughs> Yo, once you brought him up, I was like, damn, I gotta go look at his face. This is his man. Look at his face. This is his ass man. I, I invited to uh, your birthday party, you know. Yo, boy, no, bring Craig David to my birthday party. Because Craig David is somebody like I would literally marry. Like, he's perfect. He's so perfect. Uh, if you bring uh, Jessica James, we got a party going on. I'm just saying. Is she single, though? Because Craig David is single as fuck. I don't know. I mean, I care, but I don't know. Well, we got to figure that out because I'm not trying to steal nobody's man. He's single as a dollar bill. And I was like, mm, 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 got to find him. I'm taking a trip to London. You, yo, Jessica Williams. I'm going <laughs> to climb that mountain. I'm just saying. Wow. Ooh, and she 28. Oh, yo, let's go. <laughs> I mean, Craig David is grown as fuck, but you know, I work with it. I will work with it. Oh, she is not with anybody currently. Look, will you be at my wedding? Because this is about to happen. <laughs> Yo. We're going we to go find them. Right. This is going to be the weirdest double wedding ever. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, we had a comment on one of our guests that said that we don't do outros anymore. And I was like, what? You know what? You might be right. <laughs> where well, where can we find the girl who got the cream? That's still weird to me. The cream. No, Miss I'd rather have the sauce. You got the sauce. Okay, from now on, you got the sauce. I got the juice. Let's go. All right. I mean, I don't really know what what's the difference, but I don't know. But um, you can find me on Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter. At Haven underscore Rain. That's H A E V Y N R E Y H N E. Boom. Bam. You can find us on Facebook, uh, Instagram. Apparently, we have an Instagram now. That's interesting. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Facebook, Instagram, all these things. Twitter, if you want to talk to us, type in emotions and shit or emotions and shh for the PG places. Facebook, I'm looking at you. Mm Um, and you can also find us on any place you want to listen to podcasts, any and all. And I found this week, if you have an Android or an iPhone, use your Siri or Google Talk and say, I want to listen to the Emotions and Shit podcast, and it'll play our latest episode. Um, <laughs> outro us, my dear. Outro us. We will see you all later, everybody. Bye. Later.